think the days are pretty crazy, especially uh, the time here that I've been spending in New York, which is about two months now. So I stay in New York and the schools that I've been visiting are generally in Newark, New Jersey. So the day starts pretty early, something around 4.30. Uh, and I leave my house uh, around 5.30 because uh, the commute is on a good day, it's anything between 45 minutes to one hour. On a bad day, it goes to two, two and a half hours. What I mainly do um, is then I spend most of my time either observing yeah. classrooms uh, or in meetings either as an observer or as a participant with the teachers, the, the um, grade level chairs, the principal, with the two main aims of A, me trying to learn as much as I can, and I try and direct my learning with the guidance of the principal and the teachers, and B, me trying to support uh, the school in whatever way uh, they want me to support. So that could be um, either going through a number of classrooms, trying to look out for a certain number of things, or that could be creating some kind of resources which the school can use, I think I started like uh, like all teachers start, uh, having very little clue of what to do and having very little clue of where to go next. Um, and like most teachers, I really didn't understand fully how difficult this was going to be, uh, especially given the um, situation that we were going to work in. Um, I remember walking into my class uh, in my first year on day one, uh, and when I saw that I had 50 kids um, in a space that in, in a country like the US wouldn't even qualify for 25 kids with no provisions for electricity, very low infrastructure, uh, of basics like blackboards and cupboards. I think I realized it was going to be really tough. But I think the first few months what they showed me was more than the challenges of the infrastructure um, and the curriculum and the content, the challenges would be uh, the state the kids were in and not the state the tables were in. When you start teaching, that's when you realize how difficult that is and, you, and then you realize how, how literally failure in many ways becomes your best friend and how you encounter it so frequently. And, and when you compound it with some of the situations that we were in uh, with kids coming two or three grade levels behind with, with a lot of the uh, infrastructure issues, I think uh, failure becomes a lot more compounded. I think it affects you in many ways. Um, I, I think you, the first normal reaction is you start questioning yourself your ability to work through it, your ability to have an impact, your ability to change uh, and try and affect some of the changes that you want to do. All of us come with that idealistic notion of trying to fix everything in one day, that you will change everything in one year. And I think uh, even though it sounds very naive now, looking at it from the lens of three years or so, I still think that's a very critical mindset to come in with. Unless you're crazy enough to believe that you can make a difference and change everything, you really have no chance because it's so difficult. When I came for the Teach for All conference, uh, there was someone who asked the question, um, will your kids be great without you? And A, I found that a, first a very harsh question and B, a very hard question. Harsh because most of us were still unsure if our kids were great with us. Then to be asked a much more difficult question, like which meant basically, have you given your kids skills and mindset that will allow them to aspire for and be great. When I confronted that question, I think that sort of really pushed my thinking a lot. And then I sort of was able to step back and try and distill everything. Okay, what is the most important thing that I want to give my kids? What is the single biggest thing that I can somehow share with them that will have the maximum impact? It could be something that is important to me. That means whichever thing that I can convey in the most powerful way, then became very clear it has to be the vision of the classroom. My vision actually became instead of being a vision statement, it became a vision question. Uh, and it was a very simple question. I think it's a question that all of us ask every single minute. It was, what will I do about it? I felt myself answering that question in a way that I think I need to start schools and I need to start exceptional schools for children in communities uh, where no one expects them to, to have a great education uh, and hence a great life. I basically just in the space of five to 10 seconds decided from never wanting or never having thought about that I wanted to start a school to deciding that's what I'm gonna do with my life. When I looked back and I thought, what was the one thing that I could share with my kids? The, I think the thing that came to me was to make them feel that they can do something about whatever they feel like. To make them feel uh, that their locus of control is a lot bigger than what they believe it is and especially what the world tells them. And they actually have it in them to affect change. As I, as I see the vision of my school, I see it ultimately as how can we create a generation of both 
children and adult who in every instance of their life are people who ask themselves that question who despite the surroundings that they find themselves in have the courage have the audacity have the rationality and also basically the discipline to ask themselves what will i do about it and then try and pick a solution to do something about that i think for that end our vision of of starting a school which is built around excellence for that end starting a school through which we can encourage the debate and the discussion on the values which we think are critical not only for the kids that we'll be serving but also for for the entire nation i think that that sort of is what uh, gets me out of bed every day i think so to frame the question uh, that that i have for you and for everyone is uh, look around you find something that moves you find something uh, that you feel passionate about find something where you think you can have maximum impact and find something where you think there's a big need uh, and then basically ask yourself what will i do about it